Hey everybody, hope you guys are doing good this morning. <clears throat> Not here in the taco room, and man, it's got a lot of snow on the ground this morning. We got like an inch or two of snow, and gotta hope it melts off. But tomorrow I've got a one of our fish the moment on the water lessons at Table Rock, so hope at least it melts off the launch ramp tomorrow. But hey, it's a good day to do some inside work. I'm gonna be busy today with uh, our fish the moment lake map breakdowns. Uh, we're transitioning everything over from the winter maps to the spring right now. Um, if you guys are interested in any really cool lake map breakdowns of your favorite lakes, uh, just go to fishthemoment.com and you can check those out. But hey, today we're going to start, I think like a three-part series I'm going to do on square bill fishing, square bill crankbaits. One of my favorite ways to catch them. And today we're going to start out, we're going to show you the difference between the plastic square bills and the, the wooden balsa ones. And I'm really going into detail about how they became to be, uh, best times to use them, you know, situational stuff. It's going to be a lot of good info there. Um, if you guys are interested in any of this stuff that we're talking about, like I said, uh, Johnny and I have a tackle warehouse link through Fish the Moment. And um, if you guys would be interested in ordering some of these or any baits, man, we'd really appreciate it if you guys use this tackle warehouse link because it helps us uh, get a small percentage of the profits of the sale of the bait, which really helps us out put these videos out and uh, keep the lights on around the house. So that'd be much appreciated. So let's get into it here. Um, first of all, a little bit of history on square bills. Um, square bill crankbaits are another one of those um, lure categories that, that really got started out here in southwest Missouri, sort of like the jerk baits did, the, sort of that, that part of the country where it initially started out. And for, they've been around forever. You know, they started out, the, the, the big O, everybody remembers that, I mean, a lot of maybe the new guys don't, but a lot of you guys out there that are my age, you remember the 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 big O, um, and that was a hand carved square bill um, that I can't remember. Fred, yeah, Fred Young, I think is his name is. Anyway, he came up with this uh, square bill fat bodied plug back in the mid seventies, and it, <clears throat> it became sort of a uh, a tournament trail favorite back in the nineteen seventies. If you read much of the Bassmaster tournament trail history, um, you'll hear a lot about the big O, about people catching them on it. And guys like Clun, um, Bill Dance, a lot of these guys got onto that square bill uh, big O early on. And it gradually morphed into uh, a little bit more uh, sophisticated versions. For so many years, Bagley came out, you know, with the Balsa B. That was the standard square bill for so many years. The Balsa B1, Balsa B2, Balsa B3, square bill crankbaits. They were great baits, won a ton of tournaments on them. They were the tournament you know, one of the favorite tournament uh, baits, you know, for so many people around the country. But even when the, the the Bagley Balsa B series was at the height of its fame, like in the 80s and early 90s, it never did really catch on. There wasn't like everybody using it. It, was, it had sort of a cult following amongst a certain group of anglers that, that were really trying to keep it secret. And um, throughout the 90s, the first part of that, you started getting... A lot of people started making them custom ones, custom balsa square bill crankbaits. And it wasn't until, you know, later on, like in the, uh, uh, you know, close to 2000, something like that, where tackle manufacturers made a big push into making the plastic versions. And now that's basically all you see. Every company out there has got a square bill. Um, it's really the, the market saturated with square bill crankbaits. So we're going to talk a little bit about, you know, how to sort of, you know, navigate your way through that uh, maze of square bills that are out there to offer. So anyway, let's get into what we're talking about, the differences. The two differences between square bill and uh, plastic crankbaits, obviously, are their buoyancy. Now, this is the uh, Mega Bass S-Crank. This is, uh, well, I'll go into this a little bit more, my favorite uh, plastic uh, square bill crankbait. And this is a uh, balsa handmade crankbait that I use. A friend of mine named David Ryan makes these custom. And I've been using them from David forever, for over 20 years. Um, balsa crankbait, uh, plastic. You know, the biggest difference right off the bat is the balsa is much more buoyant. floats up a lot quicker. Um, and it has a little bit different action. It has a little bit um, harder side-to-side -side action. When you're talking about square bill crankbaits, we'll get into it a little bit uh, later on, but the, the, the initial thing that the square bill customs, like the one that David Ryan makes and the, and the 
handmade ones in the Bagley, is everybody wanted this bait to, to basically, you didn't just want it to wiggle straight through the water. You basically wanted it to wiggle and maybe go out to the side a little bit and come into the side a little bit and come out like that. Um, because that created an irregular action that triggered bass. Um, you know, another strike feature. While the, the plastic lipped ones, it's a little bit more hard to achieve simply because just of the body design. But uh, most of the plastic ones that you have now, a lot of the ones from the market, they're just like straight wobblers. They just go through the water like that. And that's one of the reasons I use the S-Crank by Mega Bass is this particular bait was designed, um, you know, by the Mega Bass Pro Staff. We, we spent three years in development on this bait, uh, went through a bunch of different prototypes, looking for that bait that would wiggle and go out to the side and like that. And we finally achieved it with the S-Crank and that's why it's my favorite plastic one. But the thing about square bill fishing, there's two different scenarios where I use plastic or balsa. And I still use the balsa sometimes. I still use Dave's bait quite a bit. The, the times that I want to use the balsa crankbait is if I'm fishing super, super thick, heavy wood. And, you know, lay down trees, bushes, uh, you know, stumps, any type of wood, uh, you know, cover like that. Because the balsa, what it does, it does a tremendous job of deflecting off of that wood. I can take this balsa bait and I can throw it up like, say there's a real gnarly lay down on the water with a bunch of different limbs off it. I'll throw it in the same spots that I'd throw a spinner bait or flip a jig. I'll make short underhanded pitch cast with this, with this uh, square bill. And when, when it dies down, the balsa and the trajectory of the lip trajectory it actually, it'll deflect off the limbs, and if it gets caught up on one, the buoyancy of the bait will lift it up, and I can keep going with it. And it allows me to fish that super shallow cover with wood a lot more effective. Um, there's a lot of different sizes. That's another another advantage of the custom uh, square bills, like, uh, is the fact that you can basically tell the person that's carving them exactly what you want as far as size and profile. So I have like, three or four different size that Dave makes for me, different profiles. And one of the my favorite ways to use a, uh, a square bill balsa crankbait is like in the early spring, I'll have him make me some really big ones, like almost, you know, three, three, four inches long. And anytime you're around shallow, dirty water in the pre-spawn, around like stumps, um, and, you know, again, lay downs, dirty water, dirty water, like I'm talking 12 inches of visibility, that big uh, balsa profile, for some reason, really gets me a lot of strikes in those conditions. Um, balsa just doesn't get fished that much anymore. It's like it's there. The one of the problems that you have, or a drawback that you have with balsa, is since it's a solid uh, piece of wood, you don't have the color variations that you do with plastic. You know, plastic you can create. Um, you can create translucent finishes, you can create metallic finishes, you can create flat finishes. And that's why this is my main workhorse right here is the Mega Bass S-Crank because this particular bait, you know, I can match the water clarity so much better. If it's, if the water visibility is greater than three feet, I can go to some translucent sides. Um, if it's super dirty, you know, I can go to like some black and chartreuse ones or if it's like in the middle, I could use like a sexy shad like this one is. This particular bait is um, a lot more versatile. It will come through wood. Plastic square bills will come through wood, but the things, the places that these really shine is on rock. Anytime that you're fishing a body water that has a lot of riprap, that has a lot of chunk rock bank, bluffy banks, that type of stuff, a square bill crankbait, it deflects off a rock really well. And you can actually, you know, burn it really hard. Um, and for some reason, you know, I just get a lot more bites fishing this plastic bait around uh, rock than I do the balsa one. I think a lot of it is because um, the, it's, it's basically the look of the bait. Uh, the, the, like I said, the huge advantage of a plastic square bill is the attention to detail, the look. And when you're fishing areas where those bass don't have to ambush uh, prey, like out of edges of stumps and lay downs and that type of stuff, and where they get a better look at it, that's when I like to use the uh, the plastic square bills. Probably, you know, it's the square bills, they work all year long. I mean, they work 12 months out of the year. 
but my go-to time for square bill is uh, is once that water temperature starts to hit the low 50s in the pre-spawn that's when i start fishing it and then i'll fish it all the way through up until fall it's a great bait you know like i said we'll go into some more detail on later square bills but it's just a great bait anytime those fish are around shallow targets but pertinent to what we're talking about right now is you hear a lot of people talking about spring cranking like with wiggle warts and crawfish crankbaits and that type of stuff some of the biggest bags of bass i've ever caught in my life have come on the pre-spawn period when that water temperature is in low to mid 50s on the square bill plastic crankbaits um, we were fishing a tournament at Beaver Lake, uh, FLW tournament. Um, it was, I don't know, probably six or seven years ago. And it was a March tournament. Water temperature was still cold. I remember the water was 53 degrees. And it had we had got a tremendous amount of rain into Beaver Lake. And Beaver is normally a pretty clear lake. And in this March tournament, um, the water had, it, the water was coming up slowly, but there was a lot of dirty water being pushed into the lake. And anyway, I started fishing, um, not real far up the river, but I was fishing up the, the river a little bit. And I got on this one section of steep channel bank rock the, where it, it wasn't a bluff, but it was a, it was a channel bank where the water drops pretty quick off. And if you were like 10 foot off the bank, your boat was in like 10 foot of water, ledge rock, big chunk rock. And the dirty water had pushed into there where I had like 12 inches of visibility. I took this S crank down there and I started to make a long parallel cast uh, down this chunk rock, you know, steep bank, just with like a medium slow retrieve. And I caught five bass that day on Beaver Lake that would have weighed probably 22, 23 pounds. And if you've ever fished Beaver, you know that's just a mega bag. And that was one of those days where I'd catch one and then I'd hit the trolling motor and go another 100 yards down and make another cast. So that is the scenario that I found this bait to work really good. If you got dirty water coming in the pre-spawn, um, go to these plastic square bills over the, the balsa ones. Uh, you'll be a lot better off. But anyway, uh, just a quick thing. There's, like I said, the two main things to remember. Use the balsa uh, anytime. And they're still available commercially. Or the, if you can go online and you see a lot of different people that make these. Like I said, David Ryan um, up by Truman Lake here in Missouri makes these for me. These are the Mega Bass S cranks. You can get them on Tackle Warehouse. Stay with the balsa around lay down wood, shallow cover, like that type of stuff. Stay with the plastic ones uh, around any type of rock or more open water over grass beds. Now, real quickly, before we get uh, leave you on this, as far as the, the, the setup on the thing, how I like to fish it. Um, the rod that I fish this particular bait on, um, I like to use a fairly... A short rod because I make a lot of, of like underhanded pitches with it. So I'll use Mega Bass makes one called the Oroshi Flat Side Special, which is um, it's, it's a rod you could actually use for jerk baits. It was designed for flat sides. Um, it's uh, seven foot long. It's got you know fairly soft tip on it. Not a soft. It's got a, like a medium soft tip on it, um, but it's got the backbone and the tip that allows me to really make those short underhand casts. But basically. You want to stick with like a you know a, a six foot a seven foot rod or one that's just a little shy of seven. Actually, the flat side special is just shy of seven. Don't go to anything over that because that sort of limits your ability to make those short pitches in there. And then you know you want to use a high speed retriever reel seven to one at least because that enables you to burn the bait. You can control the speed. But the big key on square bills, what I want to give you with technique is go to monofilament line. Um, unless I'm fishing the bait real slow, if I'm fishing like a slow medium retrieve, sometimes I'll use fluorocarbon, uh, Seaguar and Vizex, like 15, 17 pound test line. But if I'm fishing like the wood, the, the balsa baits around wood, I'm using like, you know, 15 to 25 pound test mono. You want that stretch anytime you're fish, making short casts with that bait, you'll just, it'll generate a lot better hookups. And on the bait, like I said, um, I use the Mega Bass uh, G Finesse uh, Gamagatsu Trebles. These are the stock Mega Bass on there, but I, which are good hooks, which, but I usually replace them with the G Finesse models <clears throat> anywhere between like the number three to number one size, depending on the size of square bill I'm using. So anyway, that's just a little bit of stuff talking about balsa versus plastic. Um, I use them both, like I said. I probably, in a year's time, I'll use the uh, the S crank plastic square bill 75% of the time, and then I'll use the balsa 25% of the time, the, the handmade custom one. 
But anyway, we'll be back tomorrow. We're going to start doing a little bit more. We'll get into some other uh, uh, stuff as far as different sizes, specific applications for these square bill crankbaits, a little bit more detail um, that maybe uh, will give you all a better foundation if you're not real familiar with the technique. So anyway, thanks for tuning in, guys. Appreciate it. If you like the video, hit that like button. Much appreciated. And we'll be back later and tomorrow with another video. See you.